lessons learned, my lessons learned. One is um, make it faculty led. All right. If it's not faculty led, it's not going to work. Um, so get them bought into it. If it's administration led, it's not going to work. Trust me. Okay. Although the administration may have a bat and be a faculty with it, you you can't get compliance. Okay. So you got to you have to go after what I call the bright spots. Right. Those people who want to change, who want to do, and everything else. Right. Get them going. Right. So that, you know what I mean. So start be faculty led. Um, know your customer. Know your student. If your student is an adult and doesn't want to be gamified, don't gamify him. Don't do these sexy things because everybody else is doing it, right? Know what you have to do and who's going to receive it so that you can better construct the experience, you know? And I guess the last one is um, reach out for, for other people who have done it, right? Because the thing is, is the nut has been cracked. But, and there's a lot of experience out there, so just reach out and say, can you help us do X? And it doesn't have to be big help. I mean, it can be a little help. And I'm not talking about vendors and consultants, all that other junk, right? I'm talking about with other institutions or uh, colleagues and stuff, but I mean, you know what I mean? That's collaborative. the collaborative initiatives. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Collaborate. You know, talk to us if you want to say, hey, can you want to do something? You know, let's, let's see if we can offer, you know, best of here, best of there type. You see what I mean? Because in online, you're not, you're not limited to physical space anymore. So it's great because you're, you're able to actually do these very innovative things that you couldn't do before because you had to be stuck in one place. You know? So those are my three things. It's part of the tool set. I think one of the things you have to do with faculty to get them engaged is all, if all you do is show them technology, they turn off. Right? Well, that's, that's nice, but you know, they don't want to. Right? So it's, 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 to me, it's less about technology and it's more about the design of how to use the technology, right? So that you are delivering the course, you're delivering the outcomes, you're delivering whatever that experience is you want it to be in a format that makes sense, you know? It's like gamification is a big term right now, yeah, right? right? So everything's gamified. Um, that only works if you have students who like those type of settings. One of my comments, which I didn't, I was going to mention, but I didn't get there. Adult learners are kind of iffy on it. So literally, I have adult learners um, in some of our programs who like it the first and second time, and then after that, they don't want to do it. So it's kind of like, I've learned the game. That's nice, fun. Let's move on, right? Because I'm here for a reason. I want to, you know what I mean? So you have to be careful in the application because if you do it to everything, you're going to lose segments of students. So you have to be very aware of that when you are designing the outcomes and the technology with it, you know what I mean? And that's what these products do for you. I mean, you know what I mean? But I think the reason why they're changing the game is that they're putting artificial intelligence into it. So they're allowing kind of the, the computer to assess, did they get it right, did they get it wrong? That's kind of a binary thing. But then as they, okay, so here's the complexity though. So here's the next one. And this is nothing new. I mean, because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the, the institutionalized tests in the United States have been doing this for a long time. So the SATs of the world, if you get it right, it takes you to a more complex question. If you get it wrong, it takes it down. You know what I mean? So. All of these things have already been thought of, it's just that this is doing it in a much different way. In our institution, it's interesting. Um, we've been looking at, we have actually do competency, but we don't call it that. We have learning outcomes. Um, the competency thing, though, is very front and center in the practical or practicum, so nursing, business, that type of thing. So what we're, we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to build literally requirements that build off of, okay, you need to learn this competency, right? And then modularize it so you say, okay, you need to learn this, and this is what you need to do, right? If you need to, right now you can't, there's, you can't do that. Right now you have to take a course, right? And in the course you have all these things. Right? So we're trying to kind of segment that out so that we can say, okay, you're walking away with this set of competencies, you know? It's interesting because although it's a sexy term and although it's been around for a while, it's not picking up the traction yet. I think until more probably of the, uh, the state level and stuff starts pushing down, the federal starts, the government guys start pushing down and actually 
saying, you have to do this, is when it's going to happen. It depends on who you are. So if you're in one of my practical um, areas, competency is, is show me the skill, right? If you're an accountant, show me a balance book, show me that you can, you know what I mean, show me that you can you do this stuff. Um, if you're a teacher, you know, show me that you can design curriculum, that type. Okay, so that's a kind of a skill-based stuff. Um, intellectual competency is more around application. Okay, so just because you understand philosophy, or you know philosophy, apply it to this. Take, you know, take this scholar's work and apply the, the themes to this. So it depends on what you're who you are and what you're talking about, what you need them to know. Um, the thing you have to look at with adaptive technologies is, is that most of them are at that very basic level. So they haven't advanced to the more um, conceptual stuff. They've, they're very much at the definition, you know what I mean? You know, this is what it is, this is what it does, that type of stuff, yeah. So just be kind of aware of that because there's a little bit of difference between that. Adaptive learning is a, a new phrase that's being attached to multimedia and um, multimedia tools, which are basically doing a combination of things. One is, is that they're taking a course and building it from a learning outcome perspective and then mapping those learning outcomes to modules. And then within the module, they're putting sexy elements like actors doing the, um, you know, the present, which you probably saw, right? Actors doing the presentations and then they tie in assessment and the thing that's, that's adaptive about this is that in the assessment, if you get it right, it gets you harder questions, so then you go into harder material. If you get it wrong, it then gives you, um, takes you back to some of that other material in a reorganized way so that you actually understand what you missed before. So the, the concept is um, that it's going after mastery. That's the big thing. It's going after, prove that you know this, prove that you know you mastered this, whatever is this, this subject. So that's what adaptive learning is. I gave a presentation with um, Adaptive Courseware, which is a, an American firm, which is literally in this marketplace who's doing this, and they have an engine that actually um, can provide these type of services. They have a platform, they also have products. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to lower the cost of a degree, all right, because right now, um, the systems in place are charging a price that keeps the system going versus what is actual for the student. Okay, so the price of degrees have really gone through the roof. Um, so what we're trying to do is bring something else in that disconnects some of those traditional system things, right? So it disconnects a professor, disconnects um, maybe any of the other things that would add cost to it put it into a delivery format that you can scale, so you can have one person doing it or 3,000 people doing it. It's not gonna cost you anything differently, right? And then charge only what it is gonna take to do that, okay? Not the full scale, like, you know, here's the professor cost and here's all this other stuff. So literally what you can do with it is you can take it down to this very low level. The vendors are still trying to make money. So I think once we kind of get to a place where this technology is a little bit more holistic, in the marketplace, I think the entire cost will come down. But right now, you know, it's, it's very much, these guys are very what we refer to as early, you know, they're out there. They're, everything for them is like first time out, right, first time out, you know, second time out. No one has actually reached a mature place in this yet. The marketplace also is going to change, I mean, because it's technology, right? So you start off, you saw that list, right? You start off with 10 vendors, we'll get down to five. We'll get down to the five who do it really, really well. You know, but that's, 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 that's technology, that's normal.